Hey everyone, it's Sarah the Registered Nurse RN.com, and in this video, I'm going to talk about left sided versus right sided heart failure. So let's get started. To help you understand left versus right sided heart failure, you really have to visualize the anatomy of the heart in your head and think about what side is connected to what. For example, the left side of your heart is connected to your lungs, so your pulmonary circulation, while your right side of your heart is connected to the venous circulation. And with heart failure, what happens? is that the heart becomes extremely weak and it fails to pump blood forward and instead that blood is going to back up and fluid volume overload is going to occur which is why you start seeing these certain signs and symptoms that tells you your heart is failing so let's take a more in-depth look at heart failure by looking at right-sided heart failure the right side of your heart receives the oxygenated blood from the venous system and whenever this side fails to pump blood the blood becomes extremely congested on this side, which will actually go into the venous circulation. And this actually increases pressure in the vena cava, which normally brings used blood, hence deoxygenated blood, back to the heart for reoxygenation by the lungs. And this built up pressure causes the hepatic veins to become very congested with blood, which leads to hepatomegaly and venous congestion, where you're going to see the venous congestion in the large veins of the neck, like with just jugular venous distension, which is referred to as JVD. And you're also going to see swelling in the extremities like the legs and the feet, along with the abdomen, which is known as ascites. And right-sided heart failure is usually caused from left-sided heart failure because of the increased fluid pressure backing up from the left side to the right. And this will cause the right side of the heart to become overworked. So whenever you're trying to think of those signs and symptoms of a patient with right-sided heart failure, remember that right-sided heart failure presents with swelling and peripheral signs and symptoms. And to help you remember those signs and symptoms, let's remember the word swelling. So S is for swelling in the legs, the feet, and abdomen, which again is known as ascites. W is for weight gain, and weight gain is one of those early signs that tells us our patient is retaining fluid. So whenever a patient has heart failure, you definitely want to make sure that you're doing daily weights on them at the same time every day with the same scale, and that they're not gaining more than two to three pounds in a day or five pounds in a week. If that is happening, that is an indication that, okay, this patient is retaining fluid, and we need to make sure that their heart failure is not becoming exacerbated. E is is for edema, particularly pitting edema, and you will see this in the lower extremities. So whenever you take your finger and you press in this area and you remove your finger, you will actually see an indentation from where you press. And then L is for large neck veins, and that is that jugular venous distension I was talking about earlier. That is just where that blood is backing up and you're starting to see where it's backing up and you will see the enlarged veins in the neck. And then the other L is for lethargic. These patients will be very weak and tired, and it's because their heart is weak and not able to maintain proper cardiac output. I is for irregular heartbeat. These patients are at risk for atrial fibrillation, so you definitely want to monitor their rhythm, make sure they're not entering into this. N is for nausea, and this happens because we have congestion of our liver, and this pressure is pushing on the abdomen, causing them not to really have an appetite and really to feel sick at their stomach. And then G is for girth of abdomen will be increased. And this is from the swelling of the liver and the fluid building up in the abdomen, which can lead the patient not to be able to breathe very well. Now let's talk about left-sided heart failure. So the left side of your heart, its goal is to pump blood into arterial circulation because it has fresh oxygenated blood it just received to the lungs and it wants to get it out to your body. But with left-sided heart failure, what happens is that heart is too weak on this side and blood starts to back up on this left side. And where it goes is into the lungs, so the pulmonary circulation, and it congests it. And this is actually the most common type of heart failure. And we can further categorize left-sided heart failure into either systolic or diastolic heart failure. So with systolic, this is heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. So we have left ventricular systolic dysfunction. And you wanna remember that systolic is the contraction, hence the squeezing phase of the heart. Remember, systolic starts with an S, squeezing starts with an S. So this is our squeezing part of the heart. And in systolic dysfunction, 
dysfunction, there is an issue with the left ventricle being able to eject blood properly out of itself. So the organs can't get all this rich oxygenated blood that it needs. And you're gonna see that the patient will have a low ejection fraction on their echocardiogram. Now, what is ejection fraction? Well, ejection fraction is a calculation used to determine the severity of heart failure. A normal EF is 50% or greater, meaning more than half of the blood that fills the inside of the ventricles is being pumped out. And an EF of 40 or less is a diagnosis for heart failure. And again, the EF can be measured with an echocardiogram, a heart cath, or a nuclear stress test. Now with diastolic heart failure, this is where we have heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction. So we have left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. And with this, you wanna remember that diastole is the filling or the resting phase of the heart. So in diastolic dysfunction, the ventricle is just too stiff to allow for normal filling of blood. And since there isn't an issue with contraction, but the actual filling of that ventricle, the ejection fraction is actually going to be normal, hence preserved. Therefore, as a nurse, you always wanna make sure you look in the diagnostic reports to see what your patient's ejection fraction is, because it'll help give you a better understanding about where your patient is in heart failure. So whenever we're thinking about the signs and symptoms of left-sided heart failure, you wanna remember that it's gonna present with mainly pulmonary signs and symptoms. And these signs and symptoms are really gonna come from all that fluid that's backing up in the patient's lungs, causing pulmonary edema. So it's really almost like they're drowning on their own fluid. So to help us remember those signs and symptoms of left-sided heart failure, let's remember the mnemonic drowning. So D is for difficulty breathing. R is for rails, which is also known as crackles. And this is an abnormal sound that usually indicates that your patient has pulmonary edema. And here's some sample audio of what crackles may sound like. Next is O for orthopnea. And this is whenever the patient lies flat in the supine position, they can't breathe, they start to smother. So they have to set up to breathe easier. And this is really stemming back from that pulmonary edema that they're experiencing. So it's more helpful for the patient to be up in high Fowler's position to breathe easier. Plus you want to dangle their feet at that bedside because what that's gonna do is it's gonna decrease venous blood return and help decrease that preload to the heart. Then we have W, which is for weakness. And again, that just goes back to because the patient has a weak heart. They're failing to maintain adequate cardiac output, so they really can't tolerate a lot of activity. Instead, setting in bed is more restful for them. N is for nocturnal paroxysmal dysmia. And this is where they have these sudden attacks while they're sleeping at night, where they wake up suddenly feeling like they can't breathe. And many patients who have heart failure actually have have to stack pillows together to set up at night to breathe, or they have to go to a recliner to breathe at night. So if your patient tells you that this is happening, that is a warning sign that their heart failure is getting worse. I is for increased heart rate. So with this, you can see sinus tachycardia because what's happening is you have the fluid volume overload and this is really taxing the heart out. So as a last ditch effort, that heart is gonna increase its rate in hopes of maintaining cardiac output. But in the end, if this heart failure is not treated with medications and other things, what can happen is that this heart can completely fail and the patient can go into cardiogenic shock. N is for nagging cough. And this is one of those things that could be an early sign and symptom that the heart is getting weak in a patient with heart failure. So you wanna educate your patient to watch out for this nagging, dry, hacking cough that could be happening. If it does, they want to report it so they can get treatment. And then as a nurse, what you wanna monitor for with this is that that cough isn't becoming productive where they're getting a frothy, foamy, blood-tinged cough to that. That is a very bad sign and requires a immediate medical attention if you see that. And then lastly, G for gaining weight. Patients with heart failure, again, as I pointed out before, you wanna monitor their weight because weight is an early indicator to us that, hey, fluid volume overload is maybe presenting with the patient. Okay, so that wraps up this video on left versus right-sided heart failure. And if you'd like to watch more videos in this series, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.